Hey, I'm Tammy and I do math for coffee and we are diving into the unit circle. I'm going to show you the way to find all the coordinates. So first of all, think about your unit circle on a coordinate graph with the origin right here at the center. We know the radius is one. This point would have to be one, zero. This guy up here, x equals zero and y equals one. This third point, the coordinates would be negative one and zero. And the fourth point would be zero, negative one. One. So we have four points with coordinates right now. Now we need to find the others. So we know that that first point that comes up off of the zero that is shows up on our unit circle is associated with a 30 degree angle. And the reason I was bringing in the special right triangles here, we can use what we know about special right triangles to be able to come up with the coordinates of the point. Special right triangles have ratios of their sides. And we know that the shortest side is going to be across from the smallest angle. So that's the A, whatever this is, goes over there. The hypotenuse will always be two times that number, and the other leg is going to be that number times the square root of three. So we know we're also in a unit circle, so we can figure all of this out. There's no mystery here. Let's zoom in and take a look. We know that the radius is one, so that means the hypotenuse is one, which means two A equals one. Do a little math, divide both sides by two. A is one half. Okay, well, we know that the side right here is one half. Now I want to caution you, this triangle doesn't go all the way over to the circle. So I know that the one is the hypotenuse and not this leg here. It doesn't make it all the way over. Take the one half times the square root of three, multiplying those two out, you get the square root of three over two. The coordinates of the point have x, y coordinates, and the x is going to be the horizontal movement, and the y is going to be the vertical movement. And since we know the sides of these triangles, we know that x has to be the square root of 3 over 2, and y is 1 half. That's the coordinate for this first point in the first quadrant. Now, if you saw the other video, I'll link it up above if you haven't seen it yet, we know that there are four other points on the unit circle that have to do with this 30 degree triangle, and there's one in each quadrant. The second quadrant angle is 150 degrees, and the coordinates will be the same, except that you're going to go backwards on the x and up on the y. Y, so the X is negative, the Y is positive, and you just use the same coordinates from first quadrant. You just make the signs what they need to be. So in this case, it'll be a minus and a plus. You go down to third quadrant, it's going to be the same numbers. It's just that everything's negative down here. The angle is 210 degrees, but the coordinates are both negative. Same numbers, just the signs have to change. Moving over to fourth quadrant, oop, I made an error there. Right now we're going to be looking at the 45, 45, 90 triangle when it is inside of the unit circle. And again, the hypotenuse is going to be the radius of the circle. So we know the length of that is one. When you are using a 45, 45, 90 triangle, this is isosceles. Both of the side lengths are the same. And the hypotenuse is A times the square root of two. All right, let's do some math so we can figure out what's going on here. The only thing we know for sure is that a times the square root of two equals one. Well, we can solve for a from here by dividing both sides by the square root of two. So a equals one over root two, which is an awesome answer, except there's this thing in math. It's like a grammar thing that says you can't have a radical in the denominator. So we have to do this thing called rationalizing a denominator, which means you multiply times whatever you see down here so that you can clear it. If you multiply by the same thing over itself, that's a one, so you're not changing the value of it. And watch what happens. One times the square root of two is the square root of two, but the root two times root two, well, that just turns out to be the square root of four, and the square root of four is two. So this technique cancels the radical in the denominator, and that's gonna be what we're going to use for A. Now remember what we're doing here is we're trying to find x, y coordinates for this point on the circle, and the x value is square root of two over two and the y value will be square root of two over two because those are the side lengths of this triangle. 
Now let's expand that out to the other points that are on the circle. 45 degrees, they're both positive because it's in quadrant one. When you move over to the 135 degree angle, this point, the X becomes negative and the Y stays positive. All right, we swing down to quadrant three. That's 225 degrees. And in this quadrant, both coordinates are negative. And over to quadrant four, which is 315 degrees. In this quadrant, the X is positive and the Y is negative. And we're going to play the same game again with the 60 degree angle, which is basically the 30, 60, 90 triangle again. When you have the 60 degrees at the center of the circle, the A is the short side is down there. The 2A is still the hypotenuse. Longer side is A times the square root of 3. We're going to go in and do the math, but it's really not going to be much different than the math we did before because 2a still equals 1, which means a equals 1 half. It's just that instead of the 1 half going up and down, the 1 half is now down here on the x coordinate that we're going to be looking for. And then we just plug it in to get the y coordinate. So we know that the coordinates are x equals 1 half and y equals square root of 3 over 2. Pulling back and looking at the rest of the unit circle, the 60 degree degree angle, one half and square root of three over two. And it's both positive when you are in quadrant one. Moving over to quadrant two, the X becomes negative, but the point numbers stay the same. Down in quadrant three, same numerical value. It's just that both of them need to be negative down in quadrant three. And then swinging over to quadrant four, you have one half and negative square root of three over two. The X is positive and the Y is negative. Okay, so let's put it all together. 